paid maternity leave, superannuation, all of those things that the community enjoys were won by this movement and this movement alone. And it is this movement, together with our friends in the parliament, the Labor Party, the progressive side of politics, that will ensure that the period we're enduring now, the anti-union period, the anti-community period, the anti-public sector period, will be short-lived. We'll make sure We need to send a clear message, of course, in the context of the Costello report that is contestability. Shame. Shame. Contestability equals outsourcing equals privatisation. We need to keep the fight going until the next state election, as we will, of course, towards the federal election coming up. Yeah, no, there you go. It gives me great pride today to announce that the state Labor opposition is going to present to the Queensland Council of Unions and the union movement generally a Labor Day Charter of Rights for workers. Please congratulate them. And Anastasia will present that to Ron Monaghan, the QCU Secretary. And I invite Anastasia just to say a few words. Please make her welcome. Ladies and John, today we send Campbell Newman a very clear message. Right across Queensland, Labor Day is celebrated in May. The great strength that we have is the fact that we are part of a stronger, wider movement. You as individuals within your union, your union within the Queensland Council of Unions, all of us within the ACTU, that is what the Conservatives fear, the strength of a movement working together to kill off their agenda. And it gives me great pride today to introduce 
the Secretary of the ACTU, David Oliver. Please make him welcome. fantastic turnout today. I just want to say that on the way over here this morning, I got a taxi into the city and the cabbie asked me where was I going. I said I was coming here to participate in the Labor Day march and he said to me, wasn't that cancelled? So I want to congratulate you for coming out here to stand up to Campbell Newman and his cronies to say that you won't be pushed around. Well done. government hasn't wasted much time to prove their credentials as a Tory government. They've moved in there straight away. They've sacked 14,000 public servants. We hear there's about another 65,000 to go. They've shut schools. They've shut TAFEs. They've shut aged care facilities. They're stopping your right to politically engage with your union. And unfortunately, it's the same thing that's happening around the country. In New South Wales, Barry O'Farrell moved very quickly, sacked public servants, shutting schools, introducing laws to deny the workers to engage collectively with their unions. In Victoria, Dennis Napthine's continuing the work of Ted Bowyer, again shutting schools, shutting TAFEs, attacking unions. He can't privatise anything because Jeff Kennett did it all beforehand. And of course, in WA we have Colin Barnett. You know, this is a guy that likes to keep the great tradition of Gordon Gecko going, that greed is good. Because Colin Barnett wants to hoard the wealth from our rocks, from our resources, and deny other states who are not doing it so well their right to participate. And then, of course, we have Tony. I've heard Tony being described as Campbell Newman on steroids. And this is a bloke who's out there now trying to reinvent himself. He's out there saying that he objected to work choices. But let's never forget, this is a bloke that once said, a bad boss is like a bad husband doing more good than harm. And who could ever forget that he called Bernie Banton, that great advocate for dying asbestos victims, a person of being a man not pure of heart. Now, after 2007, Tony Abbott came out and put his hand on his chest and he said, work choices is dead, buried and cremated. And we know that that's not true. Because we have employers out there now that are arguing for the removal of unfair dismissal rights for workers in this country. We've got employers out there now that are arguing for more individual bargaining. Employers out there arguing for the right for employers themselves to sit down and negotiate an agreement with themselves. And of course, the one bit of policy that we've heard coming out of Tony Abbott is that they'll reinstate the ABCC in an attempt to attack building workers who are out there fighting for workers. So if you look at all that, that's work choices. If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. And we know, despite him saying it's dead, buried and cremated, he's going to rebrand it resuscitate it and reimpose it on the Australian community if we let him get away with it. So what we want to know is where is your IR policy, Tony? What are you afraid of? Why won't you release it? I mean, the one thing he's publicly come out and declared, that he will not protect penalty rates for workers in this nation. He will not guarantee it 100%, unlike what the Gillard government has done for workers in this country by giving that guarantee. Now, we'll know 
when they announce their policy, I think it'll be more of a leaflet than a policy. They're going to be smart. They're not going to be out there saying we're going to attack wages and conditions of workers. But what they will do, under the, using the excuse of despicable behaviour of a number of individuals, they'll be out there expressing concern for union members to conduct an inquiry or a royal commission into the trade union movement in this country with one thing designed to come out of it. And that is, they want to make sure that we as a movement can never do to the game again what we did to them in 2007. Now I have to ask Tony Abbott, where was his house of indignation when we had directors of a company in this country that engaged themselves in behaviour to try and deny dying asbestos victims adequate compensation at James Hardy? Where were his cries of indignation when HIH, ANSET, OneTel, National Textiles all hit the wall and left their workers without jobs and entitlements? Where was his cries of indignation when Hasties hit the wall last year and workers lost their jobs and all their entitlements? Now we know, we know that workers are doing it tough at the moment. The very nature of work has changed. We've got 40% of our workforce that is engaged in some form of insecure work. And I know that today is about coming together to celebrate the eight-hour day. But how can we celebrate the eight-hour day or the 40-hour week or the fact that we have paid annual leave when 40% of our workforce don't get it? And we know, under Tony Abbott, if he is elected, it's going to get a lot tougher. So that is why the Australian Union movement is going to come together, we're going to unite, we're going to fight and we're going to ensure that Tony Abbott won't get the opportunity to do to the country what Campbell Newman has done to Queensland. Thank you very much for coming out today. And now for our keynote speaker. There is only one thing standing in between having a multiple dose of Campbell Newman through Tony Abbott, and that is the Australian Labor Party at the next federal election. It's at a tough times like these that the trade union movement can be counted upon to make sure we do our best to ensure that the progressive forces in politics overcome the Conservatives. And there is one woman that can achieve that for us, and that is the Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard. Please make her welcome.
you very much for being with us here today. It's very much appreciated. Not just that we can win, we must win. We must win. It's a jump, the march, and who won the 